Hi everybody, it's Tammy Tedero, and here's my buddy Jack. Hi Jack! And we're here to give you a quick video tour of my new studio space and office. Um, in January I moved up to the attic space of our house. Uh, we live in a 1923 bungalow, so we have a really large attic space that runs the whole length of our house. And um, in January my oldest daughter moved out, because she used to have this whole upstairs. And so I took it over. So when you come upstairs, the first thing you come into is this sitting room here, and I've turned that into my office. The best part here is that I have these huge windows. During the daytime, I get tons of sunlight in through there. Um, and I love that because I used to work in the basement and I had windows, but I didn't get a lot of sunlight. That's Jack's chair. He spends a lot of time there during the day, um, napping there. So there's my computer. And I just have this space filled with some books and some knick-knacky things that make me happy. So then you come down this little hallway and you have a bathroom, which is really exciting. I used to work in the basement and there was no bathroom down there. So I was running up and down stairs, you know, during the day or while I was working. And if I needed to clean out brushes or anything, I had to come all the way upstairs. So having a sink is pretty awesome. And then this is my studio space. It's really long um, and just really full of tons of things that I really love. And one thing about our hobby, um, any creative hobby really, is that there are a lot of things, a lot of stuff and supplies. And so sometimes figuring out how to organize them um, and make it attractive at the same time is kind of a challenge. So hopefully, um, by sharing what I do, maybe you'll get some ideas of things that will work for you. So this first section here is mostly fabric and embroidery and um, patterns and stuff like that. Most of my storage is based on these cubes. These cubes are from Target, they're closet made. Um, the cube area inside itself is a little is about 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So it's too small for some of the things that are sold in the scrapbook market to store things. Um, they did sell these baskets, these wire baskets and locker bins for a while that fit inside them. And I bought a ton of them. They discontinued them and they went on clearance. And I went to every single Target in the metro area to buy what I could um, and Target.com. Um, so they don't have those anymore but they do ever so often have them in the children's decor section and they'll be painted in colors that might work for you you could always spray paint them but so this is um what works for me is to group things together so like i said this is all sewing and embroidery stuff and all my pattern books and then on top i just embellished or decorated rather with um just different things that i've made and some vintage things mixed in um, because I love vintage anything vintage and old and shabby so um, I have lots of different collections so then you move on to this next section oh this is pretty fun to share um, this is from Pottery Barn this cable wire system and um, it's just mounted into the wall um, and it has these clips so it's an easy way to to um, display things you've made. These are just different tags I've made. Um, I can easily change it out just by unclipping and putting something different there. So this section, I have to walk around the table a little bit, I'll back up, is more of the bins. And this is all like stamping and embellishments. So you can see in these bins, I have all of my Tim Holtz clean mounted stamps. And what really works for me is to be able to store things in a way I can flip through them. So these baskets work really well for, for me for that. Um, I do keep always a catalog, most recent catalog, and I'll go through and mark in the catalog which items I have, which stamp sets, so that if I'm looking for a particular type of image, I can just thumb through the catalog and see what I have and then go right to it. And I store all of those stamps in numerical order so that makes it easy to locate. And then down below here, almost all my stamps are Tim Holtz stamps, but the ones that are not, 
I store in these Tim Holtz stamp pockets that fit in his binder. That way I can still flip through them and um, see what I have. And then I have some wood mount stamps and I just store those in a basket. So this section is different types of embellishments and they're broken up by what they are. And I've made um, inserts for my bins here and I've painted it with chalkboard paint so that I could write on them. But if I ever change what's in the bin, I, it's really easy for me to um, just wipe that off and write a new label. In this, in this bin here, you can see I have these pockets that I store different things in. And these are actually the Cropper Hopper um, 12 by 12 paper storage sleeves. And what I did was I trimmed the top and then I cut a side off so that they would fit in my bins. And then I just used clear packing tape to seal up that side. I think you can kind of see where the tape is there. That way they fit in my bin and I can come and flip through. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and show at the same time. So hopefully you don't get seasick. And then on top, I just have more of things I've made and also um, just different vintage collections. I love vintage beads and buttons and different things. So um, these are really fun. These are something I've picked up on eBay. They're vintage um, parts cabinets and parts drawers. And you can see that they're just little drawers. And I've used these Tic Tac like containers that I got in the beads section at Hobby Lobby, I think it was. And so I have all my beads, all my seed beads, sorted and in those drawers. Some different jewelry findings. And then this larger one, oh, it's so cool. Um, it's an auto parts cabinet. Um, it had this great finish on it. Um, definitely used, um, but super clean inside. So um, you can see it came with these dividers. I picked this up on eBay um, and it looked really clean in the photo. So I was taking a shot that it would be really awesome in person and it was so awesome. So it works out really well to store all of my ideology embellishments. So that's what I keep there. So, lots of little things here. Um, I just did this today. This was really fun. This is a um, vintage cutlery tray, like a wooden tray you would put in your drawer to put silverware in. This one's really tiny though. And so I put a sawtooth hanger on the back and hung it on the wall to use as a little curio cabinet. Okay, this section is like my photography space. In the past, when I was in the basement, I had a large, large, super heavy old wooden door that had been painted and was crackled and just really beautiful. Um, and I took all my pictures in front of that, but it didn't fit up here. So we bought these vintage ceiling tin tiles and hung those on the wall. And now I can take my pictures there. And when I'm doing photos here, I just bring in the light my um, photography lights that I store in my office. I do have these really awesome windows here, so I get lots of great light for photography, but I do like to bring in my lights to use, to add to it. So this section here is just kind of some vintage things, little collections and pieces of things that I love. So vintage notions and vintage laces. And in this drawer, this dresser actually was my dresser since I was like about five was in my room. So um, I think it's kind of fun to have in here. This is my vintage paper goods collection. Those are all photographs and vintage postcards. And I keep them sorted with little dividers by category so that when I want to change them out or maybe scan them to share online, I have them sorted. I love that drawer. It's full of goodness. So 
then here you see my work tables and if you've ever seen the photos of my old studio you know that these are counter height bar tables um, let's see if I can kind of show here they're black and they're actually two so I have two of them pushed together to make one large square and then my husband they had support beams across the bottom my husband cut a piece of wood to make a shelf that holds them together the two tables together and also gives me a storage shelf and then I've recently made these tablecloths for them um, because I thought in this um, this room that the black was really strong and I wanted a really soft looking room so let's see to store my my things that I use all the time that I keep out all the time I've got this vintage wire basket and these are vintage cheese boxes and I just put some of those in there they happen to fit just right and then I keep all the things that I use all the time that I don't want to even just mess with putting away now here's another cutlery tray and I'm using this to store all my different washi tapes in that way when I'm working I can see exactly what I have and I can grab them those are the kind of things if I dump them in a bin somewhere and I have to rummage through I won't um, I won't use them I won't remember what I've got um, I taught a class recently online and a lot of people were really interested in this this is my uh, Ranger nonstick craft sheet and I do all my inking and everything on this and most of my um, tutorials this is what's in the background rather than um, I wanted it solid so that rather than having to clear things out of the way and smooth out a sheet that it would just be a solid piece and I also keep a um, self-healing craft mat always on my table and these are very sensitive to heat and I have worked so many of them so this has been a great solution to me you can see that this is actually a glass tempered glass cutting pad and like counter saver so that you can put hot hot things out of the oven on it and I've just adhered my craft sheet to it and I use the red wonder tape sheets by Ranger to put on the glass and then put the craft sheet down onto it and the wonder tape is heat stable so it doesn't when I heat on this it doesn't get yucky underneath or anything it just stays just like it is um, and a really nice thing about it is that let's see if I can peel this up and show you I just use a craft knife after I stuck it down I can actually pull this up and here's the adhesive the adhesive stays on the glass and I can pull the craft sheet up and if I need to change it out because they do get worn out over time um, I can actually do this I'm on my second sheet on this cutting board without changing the adhesive so that's pretty awesome okay this section um, is all of my things that I use all the time my different inks mist um, <laughs> sorry the dogs distracting me um, so things that I want to be able to stand this is my primary workspace stand and, and reach and grab so what I've done is I've got more of the bins but then I've also got these trays and I found these in the dollar spot at Target they're just little wooden trays and usually like when they have kids decor they have them out I've seen them come out and um, be available a couple of different times um, maybe about once a year or so I've had these for a couple of years um, but then I just took and I put chalkboard paint on one side I only did one side because only one side is going to show you can see what color it originally was and then to kind of mute that that color down a little bit um, I put some Tim Holtz tissue tape on there and I've actually got an assortment of colors which is one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of hide that color around the top edge I'm sorry the dog the dog um okay then let's see up here on top um here are some of my vintage dyes and patinas and I have those stored in an old um, metal toolbox I love things like a toolbox or a tray that I can pick up and take to my work table when I'm working so that um, I can have it all right at my work table but then when I'm done I can just easily put it back and have it out of my way 
here are these are vintage refrigerator dishes. Those are my letter stamps that I use tons and tons. I'm sure you'll recognize those. Um, and then I use um, clear embossing powder a lot. So I put my clear embossing powder in this large tray and I've got a spoon there that I can spoon it onto a project. I like to do it right over the dish so that all the extra just falls right back in. white glitter. Mm, delicious. So I do the same thing with it. I just use a spoon and then let the excess fall right back in. Uh, this is not vintage. Um, I'm looking for something vintage-y that will replace it, but um, it's kind of a cupcake stand maybe. Picked it up at Hobby Lobby and then I have it on a round kitchen turntable and that's where all my distressings are. So I can easily just turn it and get the color that I want more collections. And then here's my distress markers. And they're also in a vintage toolbox. So again, if I'm working, I can just take the whole thing here. I can work and use what I need and then easily put it right back. I'm really big on cleaning up after every single project. So I love that that makes it easy to put away. My trash can that's a vintage laundry basket. And I just recently made this liner for it to hide the black trash bag because the black trash bag was really ugly showing through on it. Um, here's my sewing machine. Um, it's the nicest sewing machine I've ever owned in my whole life. I've been sewing since I was like in junior high. Um, a couple years ago I splurged and bought this for myself. I love it. Love it. Excellent sewing machine. It's a baby lock. Okay. So this work table is kind of my secondary work table. So I sew, I keep my machine out all the time and you can see it's behind my main station so that I can just turn around and sew on something real quick if I need to. Um, and then I keep my Big Shot Pro out. I own um, a Vagabond, a Big Shot, a Big Shot Pro, a Fisker's Fuse. I keep all of those in my storage space under the table. The Big Shot Pro though, I use most of the time because really it's large and it needs to set out. And um, I love that I can die cut with it and not have to cut something down. So if I want to cut something out of a, a scrap of paper, I don't have to cut it down to fit in the big shot. Um, so, and then there's the die section. Ah, dies. To me, these are probably, um, if you have a lot of dies, you know that that's a storage challenge. Um, so maybe you'll get some ideas from what I do here. As you can see, the target cubes work really well for the dies. Um, I keep them stacked on the ends, like books, so that you can see the labels. So I can bend down and I can see what I have. Um, for these, for instance, I can go too high, so I just cut a piece of foam core to work as a shelf. Um, every time I bend down there, the dog wants to play. So, um, Making a video with the dog is super challenging. Um, it's a good thing so many people love him online. Um, maybe I should have put him in his kennel. Anyway, um, you can have a drinking game with how many times I say um too. So the dies here, um, on top, here's my embossing folders. And what I did was I found these trays. And I'm not exactly sure what the original use of these trays were, they are vintage. Um, I found them on eBay. I buy a lot of my vintage stuff on eBay uh, under a locker basket, vintage locker basket search. I don't know that they really are anything to do with vintage locker baskets, but I bought them. I thought they were cool. And when I, when they got here, I was super excited to see I think that dot, um, embossing folders really, really well. And um, so what I've done is I've just divided them by the designer, most of mine are Tim Holtz. And so for his, I broke those up into categories. And then my other brands are, or my other designers are over here. Um, again, so I can flip through. I'm very visual, I need to flip through. So that really works well for me. So you can kind of get your imagination about what you could find that might fit whenever you're thrifting or going to vintage stores. Um, 
if it looks like it's that wide. I'm kind of a hand measurer, so if I found this at a vintage store, I'd probably go, ooh, you know, measure with my hand and see if it works. And this, um, come down here so you can see the label, because this has the coolest label on it. It's got a B on it. It's so cool. This is a vintage letter tray, like you would have on your office desk in an out basket, and it just happens to fit strip dies perfectly. So you can see I just put my strip dies here, and again I can just flip right through them and um, see what see what I've got there. And like I do with the stamps, I also keep a catalog, a current catalog of dies, so that um, I can mark off what I have in that too. Uh, and sometimes I'll just look through the catalog instead to help me figure out what I'm looking for. So these pans, I found these at a local um, kind of vintage thrift market. Yay, the dog found his toy. Um, always entertaining with Jack around. These vintage baking pans cost me $2.50 a piece. And I bought them just because I thought they were cool and because they were a great price. And when I got home, I was super excited to see that they fit um, the Sizzix die envelopes. So the Sizzix Thinlets dies come in these envelopes, these storage envelopes, and then they also sell these um, empty envelopes that you can put other dies in. So all the framelits dies that I have, I've put in those. So I have a bin of framelits, and then these bins are either stamp and cut sets or thinlet sets. Again, so I can flip right through. Then you get to the bottom here, and like I shared before, these bins are not 12 inches tall, but I wanted to use my cropper hopper um, organization things that I've had for a long time. So I just cut them off and um, discovered that the Tim Holtz tonic scissors will actually cut right through those. It's, you know, it's a little bit of work, but, but it works. And um, I was able to customize these bins and I've had these for a long time and used them in a, like a regular bookshelf that I couldn't bring up here any longer. So I had all these bins and I didn't know what to do with them. So thankfully, I just thought, what if I cut them? And there you go. And the nice thing here about these is that, um, so for different storage of different materials, like here are all my manila tags and um, different sizes of manila. Here's some sticky back canvas. I actually could use those paper storage sleeves and just trim the top off to fit. And um, this is a good example. Look at Jack, he loves tissue paper, or tissue paper. He's gonna get in trouble in about two seconds. Oh, good job, Jack, good job. No. So anyway, what I'm trying to show you, thank you, Jack, is that eight and a half by 11 will fit in these laying down trim the top, fit right in there. So I keep all my different types of uh, materials sorted in that way. So, and then these were different like project sleeves, I think is what they sold them as. And I just shortened those down to fit as well. Um, some of the dies I get because I work for the company um, are not in packaging. So if it doesn't have packaging or maybe it's not released yet, I keep it down in those sleeves. Now this section, um, these are uh, metal vintage milk crates. So Big Shot Pro dies fit right inside those because obviously they don't fit in my cubes. And I just set them on the sides to use as shelves. And then I use these vintage metal bread boxes to um, store pattern paper in. They're the perfect width for a pattern paper that's in the pad or even in the sleeves. So that um, turned out to be a fun way for me to use something vintage, add a little character and charm to my room, and also solve a storage problem. 
there's my vintage lace lamp I made. I shared that on the blog. And then the final thing I have to show you is uh, this window. And I've actually shared this before. This used to be in my old studio. Um, but if you've never seen it, um, it's kind of a fun storage solution. Um, this is an old storm window that uh, from our house that was out in our garage. And we've got new windows, so these aren't used anymore. And my husband was able to just take the glass out. And he went and had sheet metal cut to fit in it. And let me move this so you can see the back, so you can see how this is done. It's big and heavy. Um, you can see that he just tacked some strips in to hold the metal in place because it's obviously thinner than the old glass was. And it makes a really large magnetic bore. And that's where I store all my magnetic dies all my movers and shapers inserts. So I love that I can have them all out and I can um, see them and I sometimes kind of sort them. This is They're actually still kind of turned to the side from where it was hanging up downstairs. Um, it was hanging on its side down there. So if you're wondering why I have them all turned sideways. But anyway, so it's an easy solution. Obviously not everybody needs one this big, but you could, um, you know, if you found an old window that's half this size even, um, or maybe an old picture frame, it's really easy to, to do. We just went to a metal shop that's here in town, gave them the dimensions, and they cut it um, for us. So that, my friends, is my craft room. Um, I hope I gave you some ideas of, of maybe some ways that you can use vintage things in a new way, new way to store things didn't share that. Let me scoot back over here. That is um, a set of shutters, like I, or maybe cabinet doors. I bought them, they said shutters, but I'm not sure. So they used to have probably a fabric curtain insert, and I just replaced it with a piece of foam cord to cut that I put padding over, and then fabric, and tacked it on the back, and I made a memo board. My husband sanded it and knocked a bunch of the finish off to make it look a little more shabby and to tone down the really bright 1950s pink. So, anyway, there it is, friends. It's my happy space. Um, hope you got some ideas. Hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope it didn't make you too motion sick. And I hope the dog didn't drive you too crazy. Um, this is my world. Um, and thank you, you know, thank you friends for um, checking my blog and, and my videos and being a part of my crafty world and, and uh, always coming to see what I have to share. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Bye.